Hi class, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about creating maps with leaflet. leaflet. Leaflet is an open source JavaScript library for creating maps. It can be used outside of R, but we will only discuss using the leaflet library in R. This library uses a different plotting framework from ggplot2, although it still has a tidyverse feel due to its use of the pipe and the way it adds layers to the plot, just like in ggplot2. This video will go over the basic fun functions and syntax needed to create maps using leaflet. There will be another video that walks through more detail of the code in our studio. The concept map you see here illustrates how some of the main functions we'll use for creating maps relate to one another. We will discuss these in more detail in both this video and the next. The data we'll be using is, um, I mean, the locations are real, but it's a data set I made up which includes some of my favorite places in St. Paul. So before we jump into the mapping code or before I show you any maps, I just want to introduce you to some main functions and just kind of the main steps used for creating maps. So we'll create first create a map widget by calling the leaflet function and telling it the data to use. So this is similar to ggplot when we call ggplot when we make plots with ggplot. Then we'll add a base map using the add tiles function, which is the default, or we can use add provider tiles, which gives us a selection of more types of maps. Then we'll add layers to the map by using layer functions. So these almost always start with add. So add markers, add polygons, to modify the map widget. So these are similar to adding geoms in our ggplots. We'll repeat step three as desired or needed, and then we'll print the map widget to display it. So here's a really quick example. Uh, the function we'll use to create the maps will look for certain variable names for latitude. Those are either lat or the full word latitude and longitude, which can be either LNG, long, or longitude. So as long as your data set has those variables, it'll know to plot them. So notice here, I didn't have to tell them that because in my favorite STP data set, sorry, favorite STP by Lisa data set, let's go back to that really quick, I have variables called long and lat. They already have appropriate names. If you do not name them one of those things, or if the data you are using doesn't name them that, you need to call out the name explicitly. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And just to show you um, kind of how cool these maps are, if I click on here and sort of scroll in and out, that's going to zoom in and out of the map. So that's a feature we haven't seen before. Oops. Okay. So um, in this uh, example, uh, the only thing I wanted to show you, and oops, I just realized I lost my highlighting here. Oh, well. So this is the same as the previous map. I just want to show you that I explicitly told it latitude and longitude. Again, in this case, I wouldn't have to do that because they're already there. Um, but I just want to show you how that works. So the arguments in here are LNG, and I'm telling it explicitly to use that long variable. Notice before each of these, uh, there's a tilde don't forget that tilde. So anytime you are using a variable on the right hand side of the argument, you proceed it by a tilde. I have spent many hours debugging an error when I've gotten to do that. 
Um, and the other thing I've added here is I've added the place as a label. So if I click on these or scroll over them, I will see the label of this location. So place was one of the variables in my data set. If we go back and uh, look at my data set really quick, you can see that place was one of the variables there. So I'm using that to label my points. Okay, so this time, um, believe it or not, this is the same plot. I've just changed the base map and added some new aesthetics. So we changed the base map with add provider tiles. The two, Tutorial will go into more detail about how to choose the base map, but essentially there's a whole bunch of different kinds of maps I can use. So in this case, I use the stamen.watercolor map. I change the marker type by using add circles instead of add markers. So these look sort of like dots. Um, like I said before, all my variables have been preceded by um, a tilde. And then a couple other things I threw in here, the weight argument tells it how thick to make the lines or points in pixels. The opacity argument is the transparency. This is like the alpha argument in ggplot. So an opacity of one makes them fully uh, solid. And um, the color needs to be in hex form. Um, I use this call to hex function to do that since I don't have any hex, colored mem hex colors memorized. Um, the color names that you put in here need to be valid R colors. Okay, and just showing you one more example. Again, believe it or not, this is the same plot. So. Um, I used a, a different base map. So this is the cardodb.darkmatter base map. Um, and I have changed some of my colors and then I added uh, the polylines, which traces my route. It traces it in the order that they are entered in the data set. So this could be a, potentially a useful function for us. Okay, um, moving on. So we're gonna move on to choropleth maps. Um, first, we have to read in some data. So here we're using the st underscore read function to download the shape file for the counties of North Carolina, which is included in the SF package. This data set has number of births and number of SIDS cases in each county of North Carolina from 1974 through 1979 and 1979 through 1984. I computed a variable called SID underscore per underscore 1000 birth underscore 79, which is the number of SIDS cases per thousand births in 1979. I have printed out the first five rows of the data with the names, which are the county names, and geometry variables from the data set. I think you'll notice that this geometry variable um, is very interesting and different. Um, when you open this in R, you can actually look at this in a little bit more detail. Uh, this geometry variable contains information about how to plot the boundaries of the counties. So inside of um, each cell is actually a whole bunch of information. It's more than just one value. Um, the leaflet function knows that the geometry variable contains this special information. Okay. So here's our first plot. This is very uh, simple. Let me actually zoom in a little bit more. Oops. This plot puts the map with North Carolina County borders on top of the base map, the open street map. This map isn't that interesting by itself. Um, we actually like to do a choropleth map and color it by something. So let's do that. Let me zoom in here a little more so you can see it better. 
Okay, so a choropleth map means that we want to color the polygons, in this case the counties, by a variable. When we do this in ggplot, we can map a variable to color or fill inside of the aesthetic. But in the leaflet functions, we can't do this. Instead, we need to create a variable of colors. So a variable that actually contains color names, specifically those hex color names. Thankfully, there are functions that help us do that. Let's walk through the detail of how we created this graph. Hold on a second here. Okay, so the color numeric function returns a function that maps the variables values to colors in the given palette. In this case, I chose the Veritas palette. So pal is actually a function. We can then use that function inside add polygons. If we apply the function to the SID per thousand birth 79 variable, it returns a variable of hex colors and the variable of colors is used to fill the counties. So again, this is different from ggplot where we could map a variable to color or fill and it would do the translating of variable to color scale for us. In the leaflet functions, we have to explicitly provide the colors in a variable. The color numeric and other functions, other coloring functions that I'll talk about in the tutorial will help you do that. So again, this up here is creating a function that will map the values of SID per thousand birth 79 to colors. And then um, inside here, that pal is that function. So when we apply pal to that variable, it is now creating um, a, a variable of colors. And here I, I've done that for an example of six um, of our observations. You can see these six, these are actually hex colors. Okay, so um, applying this pal function to that variable will return a bunch of colors. And that's what we use in fill color. Okay. So this pretty much brings us to a close. I just wanted to leave you with this graph to show you that just like with ggplot2, leaflet maps are very customizable. Hopefully this map gets you excited to learn more in the tutorial and demo videos. And I'll just show you real quick. Um, as I um, scroll over these, they should get darker. And if I click, on a county, it will actually tell me the detail. It will tell me the county's name, if I can click on the right spot, and it will tell me its uh, value of that variable. I should probably put a good title on here too. I'll worry about that later. All right, well, thank you for listening to the video and that's all for now.